so, so, <laughs> so that people will get out and vote. It may get stuck in the suspense file because that's way expensive. Now, clearly, that's something that's impossible to legislate. And so short of you know, candidates really doing the job of inspiring more people to participate, then we, we get down to the brass tacks of what are the things that we can do to make it easier for people to register to vote, make it easier for people to actually cast uh, a ballot. And we, you know, I think instead of getting into the weeds on this and you know, what else we can do with things like the voter, National Voter Registration Act and uh, build on the success of the online registration opportunities for Californians and integrating registration opportunities with more state departments and agencies, you know, or even the, the various models of building on the popularity of vote by mail ballots and you know, going to the vote center model as opposed to the polling uh, place model that we're all accustomed to. I know other people will get into the details uh, of those options and the benefits and what it takes to get there. Uh, I wanted to emphasize the following here, because we can and should have all those conversations. But if we really step away and look at this from a 30,000 foot perspective, let's think about who is it that's doing the work of trying to register the unregistered? Because it's not easy. Who's doing the work of trying to reach out to the non-high propensity voter to get out and vote? Far too often the answer is either nobody or not too many people. And look, let, let, let's just be honest with ourselves here. I, I've been a candidate many times on a ballot and you have been as well. That's why you're sitting in these positions. We know how campaigns tend to be run. We know how candidates think and political consultants think, and this is not a Democrat or Republican issue. This is people who run who want to get elected do the following. You start the campaign, you get your voter file, and you, you try to model the turnout of the election and who the likely voters are, and that's where people tend to spend their time, their energy, their resources. People rarely talk to the voter who only turns out once every 10 elections because it's not an efficient use of your campaign dollars. And even then, you know, if we take another big picture perspective, when you look at uh, whether it's independent expenditure committees because more of the campaign money is in that arena as every cycle goes by, or the targeted legislative and congressional seats and you look at the political parties and where they spend their time trying to register more voters or get more people to turn out, it's only in the few, the rare, the exception of a targeted district and not in the safe Democratic or Republican seats. So by and large, there's huge swaths of California and Californians who aren't the priority to get registered to vote or to turn out in an election. You know, please correct me if I'm wrong here, but that's the reality that we're starting with. Uh, then there's another layer of the campaigns as I've observed them over my last 20 years in politics. You know, there's candidates who are running trying to get elected and we look at the strategy and, and can talk about what's missing. There's an element of negative campaigning that far too often asserts itself into those very contested races. So put those things together. Huge swaths of potential voters or actually register voters who aren't targeted because they haven't been high propensity for the last decade. And oftentimes the voters who are targeted are met equally with negative campaigning as much, if not more so, than the positive campaigning. And the net effect of negative campaigning here and around the country has been, frankly, to suppress the vote, to discourage people from voting. It shouldn't come as a surprise that the overall trend has been dissipating. So am I naive enough to think that we're going to call every office holder and future candidate out and we're only going to campaign positively and we're going to send a piece of mail to every registered voter and we're going to you know, sort of change the way campaigns have been run? No, I don't, I don't think that's realistic, at least not in the short term. So at the risk of only sounding pessimistic here, let me shift and now talk about the positive. You know, I ran for this office of Secretary of State and I've just begun my first term uh, with the vision to turn over every stone I possibly can 
to get the message out and to get the message out in multiple ways and more effective and up inspiring and uplifting ways of why it's important to register to vote and to actually cast a ballot. You know, because we can't just leave it to the candidates and the campaigns, clearly. And so what can we do uh, over the next several years? Look to me to call upon, give you some examples. Newspapers. I mentioned, uh, you know, not a major newspaper in California did not editorialize about the low turnout this last November. Well, can we call upon those same newspapers to make commitments going forward to place maybe a box on the page one of the newspaper seven days leading up to the voter registration deadline that it's coming up and to remind people if you're not registered it's time to re register to vote or to update your registration and do it again six days out and five days out and four days out leading up to that deadline and the same thing leading up to election day itself and to you know, reach out to the radio community, the television community, the social media community. In fact, you know, the Facebooks, the Googles, et cetera, they're, they're already one step ahead of us in trying to find innovative ways to get people to organize and get you know, this kind of information out. But it's not just the platforms how we put out this information, it's also the message itself. So the fact that this hearing is here in Los Angeles, home to Hollywood, let's tap the creative minds of the advertising community. There's people who make very good livings on coming up with very effective ways to influence how people spend their money. Let's tap those same brains to help us be more effective in influencing people to register to vote and to actually cast a ballot. And there's more to do, even on the government side. And I'll give you one example. We're here in uh, this building of LA Metro. So uh, after my remarks are concluded today, I'm going to go right upstairs and meet with the CEO and say, so can we create this partnership and utilize advertising on buses and on rail to do the same thing? Remind people of upcoming elections, reminding people of upcoming deadlines of registering to vote. Uh, with website information, 1-800 numbers, whatever we need. Uh, you know, your members of the state legislature, let's talk to your colleagues on the Transportation Committee. Help me connect with Caltrans to uh, utilize the boards on our freeways. That, uh, hey, I saw too much of the 30 minutes to downtown trying to come in from the valley this morning. <laughs> uh, uh, and on occasion, we'll see those same boards lit up when there's an Amber Alert. We, use those, we see those same boards, you know, reminders to fasten our seatbelts. In recent years, we've seen those same boards lit up to help remind people to conserve water. Let's use those same boards that say, reminder, election day, don't forget to register to vote or don't forget to vote. You know, there's, these are just a small handful of examples of there's a lot more that each and every one of us can do uh, to help uh, not just inform people, but inspire people and restore that civic duty uh, that uh, so many people in our nation's history have fought for and far too often have died for or currently around the world are dying to protect. And so, uh, again, it's not lost on me how uh, there is no magic wand to answer all these questions. Uh, but yes, registering to vote matters. It does make a difference. And for those who think, eh, you know, it's just one vote, it's a big state or it's a big district, will it really matter? You know, ask Controller Yee that question if every vote mattered last June, right? Ask uh, uh, Supervisor Doe in Orange County coming off this recent special election, if every vote made a difference. Absolutely. And it's not just the closeness of our elections, but coming back to our driving principle here, democracy depends on our people participating. And when we don't, we're in trouble. Uh, but uh, with your commitment and uh, persistent leadership on this, I know we'll work together to help turn the corner. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Secretary. And so let me, let me just um, let Assembly member really Thomas. Uh, you know what? I would be remiss if I don't do one last thing here before, yeah, please. before I wrap up. Uh, uh, not to talk too much about my campaign, but one of the things I'm very proud of, uh, of my work in the last two years was having traveled to all 58 counties in California. Going back to our campaigns, we all say every vote matters, but do we campaign accordingly? 